If you really want to get the most from shortwave radio listening, you're going to need an external antenna. In this video, we'll take a look at a loop antenna that can open up the bands to your listening enjoyment. In this Gadget Talk video, we're going to take a look at the MLA30 shortwave listening antenna available from a number of suppliers on eBay and other sources. If you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Be sure to click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. The MLA30 is a loop antenna with coverage from 100 kHz to 30 MHz. The loop nature of this antenna helps provide with some noise reduction within the various frequency bands by providing some directional reception that can screen out strong signals from nearby sources. The antenna is small and lightweight, so it can be easily turned to target its reception. The antenna ships in a small package and includes the wire for the loop, a powered preamp to which the loop attaches, some coax, and a BIAS T box that powers the setup. The BIAS T box is powered by a USB cable using typical USB voltages. Depending on the radio you plan to link this to, you may be able to enable the BIAS T power from the radio itself. An example would be software-defined radio running on your computer through a USB dongle. Check your dongle information and the radio software instructions for details. If you are using a portable shortwave radio, you can power the BIAS T connection with a USB cable connected to a phone power bank. What the kit doesn't include is any mounting framework. Since this mounts easily on a PVC frame or even a broomstick, it's a great way to keep both the production and shipping costs down. Depending on the connections to your radio, be ready to purchase some adapters to convert the SMA connectors on the coax to whatever you need. One connection I wanted to make was from the antenna to my Texan portable shortwave receiver. That required a set of adapters to change from the SMA to a larger UHF connector, and then another short adapter that converted the larger UHF to a TRS-style plug connector. I'll list those in the video description. Going to my RTL SDR software-defined radio dongle, no adapter was required. Altogether, I think I'm into this little antenna for about $70. Here's a quick look at the components. You see the coil of silver wire is the loop. The larger box is the preamp, and this is where the loop connects. The small box is the bias T box that provides power to the antenna. You'll notice that the coax is connected directly to the preamp box. Let's go outside on a recent camping trip and take a look at the MLA30 loop antenna all set up as well as some reception demos. So I've got the antenna mounted on a piece of PVC. It's bumped up against the bumper of my RV and then just held in place with some you know, glass grabbing suction cups and some Velcro to put it up in the air. These kind of antennas really don't need to be up in the air very far, but you can see how it's put together. It's about a 26 inch circle if you're planning to buy some PVC or use a broomstick to put the antenna together. You can see the uh, small amplifier there at the bottom, and then it comes with quite a bit of cord, and I've got a table set up outside just around the corner from the uh, antenna that I can sit at and plug in the radio. Now the radio we're going to hook this up to is just this little portable Texan PL600. I've done a review on this on my Gadget Talk channel. 
The challenge here is that the external um, antenna connection is a, a small plug, and so I've gotten this uh, from Amazon uh, that I looked and looked and found one. And then the uh, downside to that is it connects using a um, the PL259 or UHF style uh, connector right here. And of course, coming from the wire on the antenna, it's an SMA connector. So and then I also bought a, a set of adapters for SMA connectors that included the, uh, the mating side of the um, PL259 SO. Uh, 239 combination and so now I can plug the antenna into this little Texan radio using this uh, uh, three millimeter plug instead of um, the long wire that came with the radio so we'll sit down here a little bit listen in and see if uh, what we can hear so here we have the Texan PL600 and uh, we've got a shortwave station selected. I think it's uh, Portuguese scheduled to go into Brazil. And uh, I'm picking this up in uh, Western Arizona and you can kind of hear what we've got. Let me put the microphone down next to the speaker. All right, so that's the antenna, the telescoping antenna coming out of the back of the radio. So now let's put in the MLA-30 and we'll get a chance to see what the uh, the difference is. So here's the same radio station. I've got the mic down by the radio and you can see that we've got uh, uh, quite a bit more volume. The uh, little meter up on the display is, is up beyond the number five. And so you can see that the antenna has a much better job in pulling in the, uh, the radio signals than just the uh, telescoping antenna with this little portable area. I was pleased with the performance of the antenna, especially compared to what I was able to pick up with the long wire antenna that came with the Texan 600 receiver and with the telescopic antennas that came with my RTL SDR dongle. Both of those antennas worked, but not well. The loop made a significant difference in what I was able to pick up. The ability to rotate the loop to place close by local stations in the antenna's null area was a big help in limiting unwanted noise. The loop packs up to a compact size and depending on how you set up your support structure, you can get this to pack into a fairly small bag or pouch if you like to listen while away from home at a vacation home or campsite. You need to remember that this is a receiving loop not designed for transmitting. That kind of transmitting power would likely ruin the preamp and make the MLA-30 inoperative. If you're into shortwave listening or just thinking about getting started with it, the MLA-30 loop antenna would be a good place to start to add that extra sensitivity needed to receive those desired signals from around the globe. As mentioned earlier, please click on the thumbs up button below the video if you found this video helpful and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.